Good morning and welcome to Wentz's United Church of Christ. We're so glad to see everybody here today. Uh, this is Veterans Day weekend, so before anything, thank you to all of those who serve and have served. We are ever grateful for your service and sacrifice. Let us prepare for worship. Would all who are able please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in our unison prayer. God of faithful surprises, throughout the ages you have made known your love and power in unexpected ways and places. May we daily perceive the joy and wonder of your abiding presence and offer our lives in gratitude for our redemption. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah, the 12th chapter, verses 2 through 6. Please join me responsively. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations, proclaim that this name is exalted. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And our gospel reading comes from Luke, 21st chapter, verses 5 through 19. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. As we've been following the Gospel of Luke this year, Luke has been following the travels and teachings of Jesus from Galilee up north down to Jerusalem and, spoiler alert, his eventual crucifixion. In this morning's passage, Jesus is at the temple in Jerusalem teaching and answering questions. As some people are marveling at the beauty and magnificence of the temple, Jesus seizes the opportunity to foretell the impending destruction of the Jerusalem temple that would happen in 70 CE, and likewise foretell his own death. See, while he was literally describing what would happen during the Roman siege 40 years after his crucifixion, we can extrapolate his figurative comparison to his own crucifixion and death because of the symbolism that, has regularly, that he has regularly used to compare the temple to the human body. Many people today read even more into it and see it as a foretelling of the end times. Jesus then warns how no one will know for sure when this will happen, and that the people should not listen to any voice that claims to know the day and time. Even when the signs do appear, Wars, insurrections, earthquakes, famine, and plagues, the end will not follow immediately. Then Luke, in good literary fashion, foreshadows the trials of Peter and Paul in the book of Acts, which many scholars believe was 
not even written as a separate document, but just a continuation of Luke's own gospel. He quotes Jesus as saying, but before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. According to Luke, Jesus instructs his followers to continue on, even though they are persecuted, betrayed, and hated because of his name. Finally, after relating all of the ways in which his followers will suffer, Jesus reveals the catch. Usually when someone says, what's the catch? It's because everything leading up to it sounds so good, too good to be true. There must be some downside catch. Not with Jesus. In his true anti-establishment fashion, he first tells everyone how badly they will be treated. And then reveals the ultimate upside catch. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. It was reading that last verse. By your endurance, you will gain your souls, in which I had my aha moment this week. Endurance and the blessing that comes from it <clears throat> is a common theme throughout both the Hebrew Scriptures and the New Testament. But particularly in the New Testament, a better way to translate the word for endurance might really be persistence. Because it is not a passive word. God and the New Testament writers are not encouraging people to passively accept what happens to them. They actively encourage people to keep going no matter what with the faith that God is with them and will reward their efforts. The message is, be persistent in all that you do in the name of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 5, not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Second Corinthians, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities. First Timothy, but as for you people of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Titus, tell the older men to be temperate, serious, prudent, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Hebrews says, for you need endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. James tells us that because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. That's the first chapter. In the fifth chapter of James, we're told, indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. You have heard of the endurance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Second Peter, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and last but not least, revelation, here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God and hold fast to the faith of Jesus. The title for my message this week, Just Keep Swimming, comes from the Pixar film Finding Nemo. The whole film is a message about endurance, about persistence. But if it weren't for the character of Dory, the film would have ended tragically within 20 minutes. For those who may not be familiar with the story, the three main characters in the film are Nemo, a young clownfish who is captured by a diver and taken to Sydney, Australia, where he's kept in a fish tank. Nemo's father, Marlin, who is trying to find him, and Dory, a regal blue tang fish that befriends Marlin and joins him on his quest. At one point, fairly early in the film, the diver's mask that holds the clue that will tell Marlin and Dory where to find Nemo falls into the dark depths of the ocean, much deeper than Marlin has ever dared to go. Once he sees how hard it would be to retrieve the mask, Marlin immediately loses all hope. 
But Dory, ever hopeful Dory, suggests that they go after it. How? Marlin cries. How do you expect to find it down there? Without missing a beat, Dory replies, easy. You just keep swimming. Actually, what she did was sing, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, 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 swimming. But the point remains the same. While Marlin was ready to give up once things became difficult, Dory showed endurance persistence, hope. This past week, during our monthly consistory meeting, in addition to planning for Advent, which is only two weeks away, everybody, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, the Christmas Bazaar, the 2023 budget, and the coming of a new pastor, as if we don't have enough going on, we discussed ways in, in which we could introduce new people to the church. Obviously, we will continue to explore marketing and programming options. But the most effective method to tell people about Wences is to actually tell them. Word of mouth advertising has always been the most effective form of advertising. A recommendation from a trusted source goes a lot further than a clever marketing campaign. Pastor Jim Wood of Illinois has said, it's only in being a part of people's lives that you get to share Jesus with them. In church speak, we might call it evangelizing, but we need to be careful with that. We're unlikely to be successful if we just go around proclaiming the gospel to everyone we meet. Instead, we let, need to let them see the good news within us. We need to show how excited we are about the things that Wences is doing for people to make them curious. We need to tell people about the dynamic new pastor, the regrowth of multiple music programs, the exciting fellowship of people baking cookies together every Saturday, the impassioned youngish seminarian from within our own congregation, the community garden that produced over 500 pounds of fresh vegetables for local families in need the Halloween event that provided food and money to Mana on Main Street, and all of the other community outreach programs that we have in the works. Another pastor, Richard Early in Lacey Springs, Virginia, was interviewed about how they grew their congregation to a weekly attendance of 275 in the town of Lacey Springs, Virginia, with a total population of 150. He boiled it down to connecting with people, first through relationships, then to the church. In an interview, he is quoted as saying, don't try to get someone to come to church before they come to you. And no matter what we are doing, we must do it prayerfully and consistently. This is where the endurance comes in. Anything we do once or twice is bound to fall short. But when we persist, when we faithfully engage with those around us, when we trust in God and show endurance in our actions, that is when we start to make a difference. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. For you need endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. In other words, when you don't know what to do, you're about ready to give up, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Amen. I'm going to head back over here now. This morning, first and foremost, I would like to wish a very happy anniversary to Tony and Rita Cipriano. Flowers in their honor, which are beautiful. A um, couple things, obviously, all of these are in the crosswords, and you can read everything that is going on yourself, but I would like to put out to everyone, Matt, who has done and always does a fantastic job running the electronics, 
would still love some help with that to get a break every now and then. Um, it doesn't have to be one of you. Maybe some of you know a high school student that enjoys AV and electronics type stuff. Maybe you could let them know that, hey, if you come do a couple Sundays at Wences, that will go towards fulfilling your service requirement and get that word out there. Uh, so let's see what we can do to help Matt out with that. Are there any other announcements from the floor that anyone wanted to be sure we hear? Rita, please, step forward to the... Yeah, our ranks were small, but we got the job done, which is absolutely astonishing. And um, the, for everybody, even if you talk to your neighbors and your relatives and you know, support us, it, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you all. I can absolutely reiterate that. Thank you, Rita, for organizing all of it. And yes, thank you to all of the bakers come out. Um, I talked to different people coming out who were like, you know, it's hard for us to get around, but can't necessarily make it every week to worship, but we always make it for the cookie baking. And, you know, it, it is a special time. It's, yes, the cookies are wonderful, and we all look forward to them at the Christmas Bazaar, but the people who are there look forward to the time together, even when there are glitches, as I know we had a couple of glitches this year, but uh, everyone banded together and worked through them. So thank you all very much. And uh, yes, as I mentioned, Advent is only two weeks away. It starts the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and then the very next week is the Christmas Bazaar. So tell everyone you know, come out and attend that. We have a lot to be grateful for. So much to be thankful for. So, it is not asking much that we do what we can to give back. Please join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts for our offering. Blessed are you, maker of all things. As you have entrusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we have a choir selection prepared for you.
Thank you for leading the applause. It would seem gauche if I had started it myself. Would you all please rise? Come now with our hearts set not inwardly but outwardly for the prayers of the people. Are there any prayers, joys, concerns that anyone would share that I may not be aware of? In that case, please join me. Lord God, friend of those in need, your Son, Jesus, has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Renewing God as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others, safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel, grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Catherine, Don, Ginny, Keith, Bev, Nanette, Teresa, Oliver, Ryan, Roberta, and Robert. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray this New Zealand version, eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trial too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Please rise for our sending hymn.
as we go on our way, please join us downstairs. Jim O'Donnell has graciously provided some treats for us to share together in fellowship in the Connections Cafe. And I would just like to, again, thank all of the veterans. Um, it is something I never had the honor to do, but I am lucky to be surrounded by those who have served and fully appreciate everything that they have offered up to the rest of the country. Now, may the God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you, faithful Zoomers. Always a pleasure to see you. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Have a good week. <laughs>